Hi team. So this is tip 7.1, which is about the mineral components that make up soil. That is, apart from the organic matter and the water and the air that also constitute the essential makeup of soil. There are three essential types of mineral particle that you find in soil, ranging from very coarse through to very fine, and I'll go through them in that order. I'll discuss the salient features of each, their strengths and their disadvantages, and talk about how you can actually make the most from this particular type of soil. Then lastly, I'll just discuss a simple means that you can use to actually determine what is the physical makeup of your soil. Now any soil will actually have a combination of these, but usually one form of particle will predominate over the others. Firstly, we'll look at sand, which is the coarsest particle that you will find. Sand is simply ground up rock. In fact, you can often see the individual grains with the naked eye. It feels grainy when you rub it between your fingers, and your fingers will usually come away fairly clean. Its strengths, it is very well drained and aerated, and ideal for dry living plants such as succulents. However, it has a very low ability to retain water and nutrients, and in its raw state is unsuitable for growing vegetables, most fruits, and many ornamental plants unless you add constant additions of fertilizers and irrigation. Soluble fertilizers will leach out of sand very quickly and may burn the plant's roots if too concentrated. So it is generally better to use slow release organic or pelletized fertilizer. Sand is however suited for growing succulents and other dry living plants, including Mediterranean style plantings. It can be improved with organic matter and still retain its positive features. However, being so well aerated and warming quickly, the organic matter breaks down quickly and needs to be replenished. A solution here is to combine clay with the sand to create a more loamy soil. On a very sandy ridge derived from an ancient sand dune, my friend Mark wanted to grow berry fruit. We added trailer loads of clay and worked it into the soil along with copious amounts of organic matter. The result is a fertile loam suitable for growing fruit and vegetables. I understand that in some garden stores you can actually buy powdered clay. So if you have a sandy soil, it might be worthwhile to add that to your soil, spread it and then work it in along with plenty of organic matter. And that should improve the overall quality of your soil. The second type of soil, which is less coarse, is silt, which I'm showing here. Silt is simply rock that is ground up more finely than sand. So it has much the same features as sand. Being finer in texture, it is hard to see the grains with the unaided eye. It allows for good drainage and aeration so long as it is not mixed with too much clay, in which case it takes on the qualities of clay and less generous amounts of organic matter is added. When rubbed in your hand it feels slightly gritty. A silty soil is suitable for growing many shrubs and trees which usually have extensive root systems that will delve deeply into the free draining and well aerated soil. However, it doesn't have the fertility needed to sustain short term crops such as vegetables or flowers, unless plenty of fertilizer and irrigation is added. Finally, clay. This is an extremely fine material, actually crystalline in nature and not at all comparable to sand and silt. If you rub it between your fingers, it feels silky and your hands end up dirty. Clay particles are chemically active and have a great ability to retain both nutrients and water. However, a strongly clay soil has poor drainage and transmission of air. The result that it easily becomes saturated with water, meaning that plant roots aren't able to access the nutrients, or even the water itself. This is a bit like a sailor stranded in the ocean, plenty of water but dying of thirst. One way to improve a clay soil is by adding plenty of organic matter. Another great way, combined with the organic matter, is to make raised garden beds, which will do a lot to improve drainage and aeration. You can see in this garden that the ground level has simply been maintained as paving with plenty of allowance for drainage, however the race gardens allow the growing of vegetables and berries. Understanding the primary component of your soil is a key way of working out how you can best improve it to get the best outcomes from your crops. Here is a simple method for finding out the mineral makeup of your soil. Dig a hole until you are just below the darkest level of topsoil. Remove a chunk of the paler subsoil and moisten it. If it feels gritty, it is most likely a soil high in sand or perhaps silt. Now roll it between your hands into a tube and try to bend it. If it bends easily and tends to stick 
to your hands, it will be largely clay. If it cracks while bending, it will be high in silt. If it immediately breaks and refuses to bend, then you have a sandy soil. The soil in my garden is called a loam. It has the ideal combination of sand, silt and clay. Plus I have built up the organic component of the soil over the years. The result is the best combination of fertility, drainage and aeration, meaning that it is suitable for almost any kind of vegetable, fruit, flowers or ornamental garden. With a bit of planning and effort, almost any soil can be modified and managed to create similar results. So that's it for this tip. I hope that you're able to carry out this method of determining your soil type and then adapting it to get the best results from it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and like this tip. And also, thanks very much for watching this through to the end.